Hi guys, so I have a bit of an impromptu review because I feel like House Labs did not market this launch at all. Normally I'm hearing about these products launching well before they actually launch from the brand. So this one was like a quiet release. I didn't even know. I was out of town in LA and these launched and I was like, what? But they looked so gorgeous online. So as soon as I was able to, I just came back from Sephora because they do have these in stores. I don't know about all stores, check online, but they had it in my store. So these are the new House Labs Eye Library Eyeshadow Palettes. So they launched them in two shades, they call them volume one and two. So that leads me to believe they might expand this line potentially if all goes well. I'm sure they're like testing the waters because this is their first true powder eyeshadow formula. and. The bliss I feel with all the eyeshadow palettes that have been launching and I saw these in stores and they looked so rich, so buttery. In particular, there's three kind of glittery shades that we're going to talk about. But like I said, you can pick this up on the House Labs website and it is also available at Sephora. And then I believe on the 30th of this month, it will be available in the UK. Now these are expensive. I did not realize how expensive they were. I just threw them in my basket because I was literally hypnotized by the swatches but these are $50 each that's a lot for only having six eyeshadows Whew, okay it also says they are limited edition and they are sticking with that clean at sephora skincare infused ingredients which is interesting for eyeshadow because it does say it has like squalane hyaluronic acids and vitamin e infused into this formula Anyways, let's take a look here. Here's the box that they're gonna come in. Clean, cruelty-free, vegan, and talc-free as well. I'm looking for the made in. Maybe it's in the packaging? She's made in Italy, you guys. If you don't know, in my opinion, Italian factories create the best makeup products particularly when it comes to eyeshadow, so I'm really excited to see that. And I was thinking with it being clean and also having those skincare ingredients that the shelf life wouldn't be as long, but it's actually 24 months, which is better than I was expecting. Honestly, sometimes when eyeshadows have this claim, they literally will say six months, so that's really good. And then uh, five grams of product. So we're gonna take a look at volume one first. Honestly, not the one I was most excited about, but the swatches seem delicious. So I've already got my paw prints all over this, but here's the packaging. It's very small. For example, here's a mini Natasha Denona palette. It's not much larger than the minis, and you know how tiny these are if you've ever gotten your hands on this. And then let's see, it has a magnetic closure. You do have a mirror, and then here are the six shades. I've turned the lights down so you can really see the texture. I know your eyes are going straight right here because mine, of course, did as well. I don't even care about these, but these are still going to be good as base colors to be the background for these guys to stand out. And what I thought was interesting about these shades is they say there's biodegradable glitter in these formulations. So let's go ahead and swatch. I'm going to keep the suspense up. We have three satin shades, as I would describe them. They say that they're matte, but they definitely have a satiny feel to them. They feel quite buttery, and normally a formula like this, which is more on the satin side, is going to be better for mature eyelids. Oh, sorry, I have my hands stained from swatching in store. Okay, so we have a light beige matte. Then we have a sienna matte. Then let's see this deepest shade. This is a cocoa matte. I don't know if you can tell, but there's little to no fallout with these shades. So we'll see how these build. All right, here you go. So this is a pink gold chrome, a golden amber chrome, and an auburn chrome. So I like how they describe these as chrome shades. And these feel not wet, but extremely creamy to the touch really not powdery at all. I feel like these could almost be like a cream eyeshadow. They feel so wet, which is why I'm so shocked that these have a 24 month shelf life. So here's that pink chrome, the gold, oh my gosh. Faints right here, right now. And then here's the auburn chrome. I mean, these are quite glittery. Do you see that? They looked magnificent. 
under the Sephora lights. And if you go on their website, you're looking for a little bit of look inspo. They do have some looks right here. Okay, so let's take a look at number two. This is the one that's a little bit more fun. Oh, not me holding it the wrong way. Oh my gosh, oh, look at that. This one's right up my alley, right? We have some cool tones. And honestly, I feel like these colors are really thought out, right? You have a lighter shade, a mid-tone shade, and then a deep shade, which I feel like they also did with the other one. And then three very different shimmers. For a six pan palette, I feel like each of these shades have their own place, which is really important in a palette, especially in a palette that's $50. All of these better stand out on their own, and they definitely fulfill all ranges of depth here. I love that. So again, we're going to start off with the satiny shades here. They feel the same as the other palette. So we have a smoky brown matte, a mauve brown matte, and then a light peach matte. So here's that darkest shade. It's swatching so smooth, not slippy at all. I'm so excited about this color story. Okay, so this shade, this formula, really interesting. It's a bio glitter formula. So they call it olive bio glitter. Then we have fuchsia chrome and then dusty rose chrome. And I'm noticing the chrome shades have more of that creamy wet feel, whereas the bio glitter definitely has a looser like a drier feel, but not dry in a bad way. Okay, let's see. Really pretty. I bet you the reflex are gonna really stand out. <gasps> Wait a second, the shade right here, the Dusty Rose Chrome, holy cow. Okay, so these are both of the palettes right here. I think they are both stunning for warm girls and cool girls. Okay, let's get these on the eyes. So we're gonna start off with volume one. I know I'm keeping the suspense up for that second one. And then for brushes today, Refer just launched their Max and Mini brushes, which they've literally taken their most popular brushes and then made them in a bigger, a max, maxi size, max size, not maxi, and then a mini size as well. So I'm gonna be digging into these. These just launched, I'll have them linked down below. So I'm gonna start off with the number one Max brush. And we're gonna start off with this peachy shade right here. And I'm gonna use that to kind of set, just to see how this pulls on my eyelid. I said there's minimal fallout with this, and there is, but it is a little bit more powdery than when I used my fingers. But this shade is honestly literally my skin tone, so nothing special is happening here with this. So this is just to set the, <laughs> to set it, okay. Now we're going to use the same brush and I'm going to dig into this warm shade right here. And we're going to kind of put this right here on the crease. I literally forgot the term. Quite pigmented, honestly. So I'm wiping my brush now and we're going to blend because I didn't dip too heavy into the pan. But this brush is a little denser so that might contribute to the pigment that we're getting here. And I'm playing risky games here because I actually put my concealer down. I normally don't for eyeshadow reviews. I'm going to go ahead and put this along the lower lash line as well. But yeah, if I tap off my brush, I'm noticing I'm getting no fallout on the face, which is great news, but so pigmented. Oh my gosh, this color is so bright. It would be really pretty kind of on its own. 15 mini brush and we're going to see how this shade does the deepest shade and I'm going to kind of put it underneath the warm shade since we do have three of those glitters I'm aiming to get the glimmers everywhere all over the eyelid and these are blending out really nice this isn't giving me as much depth buildup as I was hoping it's pigmented but you know, some shades, I feel like you can add so many layers and you can get it to be really, really dark. Pat McGrath is a great example of that. This one is not building up as deep as, say, a Pat McGrath palette would, but it still has pretty good pigment to start off with. So, running this also a little tighter along the lower lash line, but they're blending really nicely. So the mattes, a solid formula. Okay, this brush is amazing, the number two mini brush. It's the perfect size for small slash hooded eyelids. We're going to see how this shade applies with a brush. 
little bit of kickback, nothing crazy. This is the pink gold chrome. So it definitely has a piecier, more sporadic application with a brush. I can just tell finger is for more opacity. Like you see how subtle that is? Oh, not, my nails are making this difficult. Oof, it looks really reflective, you guys. And this particular shade has a pink gold shift to it. Let's see how the gold is gonna do. This shade is probably the most pigmented of the shades that I swatched. Oh my gosh. And what's really nice about this formula is you can use a lighter hand or a brush and it's gonna give a less pigmented, more natural look. A little bit more, like I said, sporadic with the reflexes. But you can also build this formula up to be really, really orange or yellowy. I don't know how you describe this, amber. And I'm using my brush that I use in the crease just to blend the reflex so that it looks more natural. How beautiful. Okay, and then this shade right here, the pinky shade, I don't know that it really fits here, but I'm going to put it along the whole lower lash line. For the sake of the review, we're going to sneak this in here. So stunning. I'm taking a 13 mini brush, and we're going to... Just really try and coat this since this isn't the best formula with brush. And I want this to be literally all over the eye. On the under eye. A little bit of fallout from using this technique since it's not sticking to the brush as good as a finger. And that might turn you off because this is a $50 palette. Personally, I do prefer a formula that can apply just as good with a brush as it does with a finger. But... This palette's lucky it's so reflective and beautiful because maybe I can get over it. And then I'm going to take just a little bit more of the darkest shade because I do want to keep the depth out here. To be fair, this palette doesn't have as much depth as I thought it was going to have. But how pretty. I just feel like this palette is really good for simple looks. Just put one of the colors in the crease and then one of the glimmer shades all over the eyelids for a really simple look that's going to look more complex due to those glitters so it's all about the reflex here stunning let's get into the other eye here urban decay eyeshadow primer is what i'm using okay now number two this is this is what i came for if i didn't do what i did this would probably be the only one that i would have picked up so i'm gonna start off with this peachy shade with a number two max let's see how this looks against my skin tone it's not quite as close as volume one but it does leave a peachier tone. Honestly, this would be pretty all over the eyelid, but I'm just gonna use it lightly to set. I'm gonna take a 15 max brush and just blend it out. But for an all matte look, this would look really, really neat as an all over eyelid color. Okay, let's test out with the 15 max, this mauve shade, which looks stunning. I'm not gonna do anything too different from the first eye because this is just the best way to see all, how all of the shimmers lay on the eyelid. But this shade is really pretty. So I would definitely say the biggest critique I have about this matte formula, it's beautiful and blendable. However, it doesn't build up in depth level, which is something that I look for in an eyeshadow palette of this price point. But the shade is gorgeous. Let's take a 14 max and let's see if we can get smoky with this shade. So I'm just circling this in the outer V and bringing it into the crease here. See what I mean? It's just not as deep as it looks in pan. Not that it looks super deep in pan, but if you're familiar with a lot of the eyeshadows that I typically review, it's not giving the depth that I would normally be looking for. But honestly, this would be really great for beginners to eyeshadow because of how easy they are to blend and how you can't be too heavy handed really with this formula. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more of this shade. I love this mauve shade. It's a bit light, honestly. I don't think this particular color story is gonna be great for deeper complexions because these shades are not building up how I would like them to. Switched over to a 14 mini. 
And I'm just gonna continue to try and build this deepest shade. Okay, I know that this shade is about to be insane. So with the brush application, it definitely has a more natural look to it. But let's amp it up. A little goes a long way when you use a finger. Holy cow. This all over the lid. Mm hmm Okay, but I do need to see, as much as I would like to go in with the fuchsia shade, we have to see how this shade, the actual glitter one, is going to look. So I am putting this all over. Honestly, so pretty. These ended up looking more subtle on the eyelids than I anticipated. I thought it was going to look as vibrant on the eyelids as it does in pan. I feel like none of these shades are looking as vibrant as they do in pan. But they're still really pretty. The reflex that they used are gorgeous. So make sure you blend the top here to make sure that the glitters look blended into the look. And then with a 13 mini, we're gonna dig into this fuchsia shade and I'm gonna run this along the whole lower lash line. This shade is gorgeous, even with a brush application. It adds much more vividness to the look. So this one I feel like is pretty close to how it looks in pan. Oh. I actually really, really love that shade. I do want to bring back a little bit of the smokiness. Okay, and I know it looks a little bit like eyeshadow barf, but we did have to test all of the shades on the eyes. So I'm going to put on some liner and lashes real quick. So as I was finishing my makeup, which I will have linked down below in the description box, everything else that I'm wearing, I took some time to truly assess my opinion on these palettes. And it started off really strong from the swatches in the stores to the photos online, even to the beginning of the applications. But I've come to the conclusion that for me, these are not really worth the money. $50 for six shades. That's a lot of money. And here is where I personally am not a fan of the formula. I feel like the shades, the matte shades, they don't build up enough depth. And as you blend, they can kind of blend away. They lose a lot of that opacity. I like a pigmented matte. If you don't care for a pigmented matte, you want something easy to blend, then the matte formula might be for you. The glitter shades, very, very pretty, a very beautiful consistency, and I actually really like the reflex in here, but I don't feel they are vivid enough. Like, look how vivid this green is. It kind of got lost on my eyelid. Even the fuchsia, like, it's still bright, but it's not as bright as it could be. This shade, it doesn't have as much bounce off the light as I would like. And then same thing in volume number one here as well. Now this one's a little bit more vivid, a little bit more true to pan, but they're just a notch below. And I just know there's a lot of formulas out there where they're just as vivid on the eyelid as they look in the pan. So for me, these are an eh product. I really wanted to like them. In fact, I was certain I was going to beg for them to come out with more in the beginning of this because they felt and swatched so beautiful, but I don't feel as though it translates as well onto the eyelid. So the the mattes, they're lacking depth. They're lacking buildup. The shimmers, beautiful, but again, they just aren't as vivid as I want them to be. I mean, the proof's in the pudding, you can see. But if you're into really simple makeup, you don't need that vividness. You just want a pretty quick blend with the mattes, and you want a pretty glow, a pretty eyeshadow shade. You actually might like these. I think these palettes are going to excel in simplicity. If you're popping all six shades onto one look, not so great of an experience, but if you want just a quick two eyeshadow look, one matte, one shimmer all over the lid, you're going to get a very pretty result. So then this might be more for you. Yeah, I mean, these are pretty, they're nice. I do think they're a bit overpriced and they seemed a lot more promising in store than they actually did with application, but this is why I do this as a job so I can let you guys know. So unfortunately, these aren't for me, but hopefully I've given you all the facts where maybe this might be a formula that you will love. But anyways, 
<laughs> there's a lot of other things from House Labs that I think are amazing and I'm not scratching these off. I'm definitely going to continue to use these and I want to use them with a little bit more simple looks and I, I might actually end up liking these a lot more. But for this price point, there are other brands that I am going to gravitate towards. So I hope you found this review helpful. If you've tried these eyeshadow palettes out, let me know your thoughts below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.